How's it going, PD team? I've got a special holiday video for you today. Get ready. It's a beginner-friendly video with some intermediate techniques sprinkled in. In this video, we'll do some basic modeling, cloning, and texturing with Redshift nodes to get a randomization from a selected color palette. We'll be using the matrix scatter for cloning millions of sugar particles. Lastly, I'll finish it up with a fix to common problems when rendering. This video is for everyone with the Cinema 4D sweet tooth and the holiday spirit. This video is inspired by a suggestion from top commentator Jordan Wright 5795. Project file will be in the link in the description below. I have one request. Watch the entire video before downloading. Say no to cheating. With that being said, happy holidays and let's dive in. Okay, so here's the basic setup. We're using a low poly mesh that we modeled out. We're displacing a little bit. We're smoothing it out. Then we're using the matrix to clone the sugar. The sugar's down here and it's being linked in with the redshift render tag. Then we're grouping it up. Then we're cloning it. We're pushing it apart and randomly positioning the items. And we're also randomizing the sugar pieces as well. And I'm using an HDR to light the scene and I'm using another dome light for just a blue backfill. What you do to the scene is up to you. Okay, so here we are in a blank scene. I like turning off the world axis and I'm going to go ahead and start off making this gumdrop using a cylinder. Now I want to show the edges. So I'm going to hit NB as in boy. That shows our edges. I'll hit S to bring it into focus. And we want to get rid of the vertical, the horizontal segments here. And then I'm going to make the height 100. And I'm going to just model this out at uh, standard size. I'm not going to do it to real world coordinates. I'm just going to use standard sizes here. This gets us pretty close. I've seen the height on gumdrops change and be different sizes. Sometimes they're taller. I'm going to go with something like this, like 90. And then I'm going to hit C to convert to polygons. Go to my edge selection, double click to do a loop selection, hit T to transform, scale it in a little bit to get that little bit of a cone shape. Right click, bevel. We're going to bevel this to something like here. We'll even do 26 even. And then we're going to just click one, two. So we have two subdivisions. Remember, this is a low poly mesh that we're making. Then what I want to do is I want to do some cleanup here. I'm going to get rid of the top. So I'm going to type in nine on my keyboard, hit enter to go to face selection, select, delete, right click, close polygon hole. And this is important that we change it to patch. And you want to make sure your grid lines up evenly. So if I go into the front here, you can see our patch is facing forward. If it's not, you can click, you can click the patch rotation till it lines up. So I'm going to type in E for the move tool, double click the edge. I want to bevel this and we don't need a big bevel. So we're going to just do something like that. Then I'll get enter to go to the face selection mode, hit nine to select. Hit I for inset, and this is going to be the part that touches the wax paper. And then we'll do it one more time till we get a small circle. And then we're going to lift this up because we want an indentation on the base. Then we're going to hit backspace or delete, right click, close polygon hole. And now you can see that we need to use the patch rotation till it lines up. So you can see that patch lines up with this patch at the top. Now you want to avoid when you're subdivision modeling detailed areas and then flat polygons like this where you have lots of space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in M for model and then L to loop. And we're going to do a loop cut and I'm going to hold shift so it goes in the middle. And then I'm going to do one here and then one in the middle like that. And then with that selector, I'm going to hit T to transform, T to transform, and just bulge it out just a teeny bit. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit and bring it out just a little bit more. Go back to the move tool, go to our model mode. We'll rename this low poly. And with the low poly selected, we're going to hold down alt and hold down subdivision. Click it. And there we go. Now I kind of want this edge sharper. So I'm going to hold Q down and that disables it. We can come in here to our edge selection, double click these, double click these. I can bring this down like that, bring this down like this. So we get a little bit of a sharper edge. There we go. And then you can see we get the indent below. Now I do want there to be some deformation here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to the low poly. I'm going to go here and add a displacer. I'm going to hold shift and nest it. And we'll go to the shading, click noise, bring the noise scale up. So we get a big distortion. I'll do three, 400, and then we'll click up to go back, go to object. And I'm going to set this to just one. So we get just a little bit of distortion to the entire object. Let's try two. There we go. So we just have something very subtle, nothing crazy. Next, what I want to do is I want to apply, let's call this come drop smooth. I'm going to first make a cube for the sugar. And if you look at microscopic images of of sugar. They make cubes and shattered kind of shapes. So I want to keep this low poly as much as I can. So I'll start off with something like one, one, one on the cube. So it's really small. And I'm also going to do something that's going to catch and create variation in the sugar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use a cylinder and set it to one and two. So we get this and then we'll bring the segments down to six and one. So we get this kind of shape. So these are the two. And let's do um, let's do 0.5 and 1.5. There we go. So we're still maintaining that. I'm going to throw these in a group, call it sugar. Next, what we want to do is we can turn it off for now. Go back to our gumdrop, hit S to bring it into focus. And let's go ahead and put the sugar along the surface. So you can use cloners for this or you can use the matrix. I would suggest use the matrix. It's going to operate faster and use less memory because the clones are done at render time. So to do that, you go to Redshift, Objects, Matrix Scatter. Can also be found here in the list. I have a habit of going up to the top because that's where it was before they added it to the list. 
We're going to go to our tag, render tag, change it to custom object, drag our two shapes in like so. And we can just set this to random. doesn't really matter because they're going to be randomly cloned. And then go back to the matrix. And instead of grid, we're going to do object, drag in your smoothed object in. And we're going to crank this up to a bunch. I'm going to put 5,000 for now, 500 for now. Draw size, we'll set it to one because that's the size of our cube. Set it to one. So I set it to the same size. And this is just a visual play. Whatever you put in here is the size. It doesn't really matter. It's just the display size. So let's go to 5,000 and see if that's enough. So I believe I use 10,000. There we go. Next, what we want to do is we want to rotate these and give them some variation. We're going to leave it to surface. A vector, we're going to leave to none. So let's go ahead and have this selected. We'll go to our effectors and we're going to do random. And this is going to place them randomly in a given space. We'll change it to parameter. We're going to just turn off position. We're going to do rotation 360, tab 360, tab 360. So now they're randomly distributed in the rotation. Next, what we want to do is you can see we get some intersection happening. And to fix that, we're going to go to our matrix, go to the transform and just click once out. So one uh, on the Z, it's going out in the Z and that's going to keep them from intersecting the surface. And the reason you want to do that is it's going to mess up your texture if they're intersecting. A little bit's okay, but you want it minimal. So there we go. There's the model. And you can, of course, do more matrix elements by just going to the object and cranking this up. But I found that 10,000 is kind of a sweet spot. It's not too much and just enough. Okay, now that the modeling's out of the way, let's go ahead and start texturing. Double click twice. First one's going to be gumdrop. The next one's going to be sugar. So for the sugar, I'm going to apply it to the two objects here, the two sugar pieces, and we'll make the texture white and turn up the reflections. And there's you're going to run into an issue I'm going to reveal in the end, the fix. So we'll just leave it like this for now. And I want the reflection roughness to be 0.05. So it's highly reflective. And we're going to pull down the reflection to like something like 0.35. So not super shiny. So there's the sugar. And next the gumdrop will apply. For the gumdrop itself, I'm going to leave everything default right now because we're going to dynamically drive the color. I'm going to bring the reflection down to 0.125 so it's not super shiny, just enough. I'm going to bring down the IOR to 1.35 and I'm going to adjust the scatter color and mess with this in a little bit. So we've applied it. Let's go ahead and do a cloner here. So I'm going to hold down Alt, click the cloner, and you can see our clone of our sugar is not applied. So what we're going to do is do the gumdrop. We're going to Alt G to group it and annul, call it gumdrop, and bring our matrix inside. And there we go. So now we've got the cloned sugar with the scatter and the cloned elements. And I'm just going to leave it for demo sakes. You can do random positioning and all that good stuff. So what we need to do is we're going to set the cloner to random. And what that's going to do is if you decide to do the just a couple different versions with different displacer amounts to get some more warping to be a little bit more photorealistic. You can make like three versions of this with a little bit of subtle distortion to it. Now, if we look at now, if we look at gumdrops, they have some kind of waviness to the texture. Before we go any further, let's set up some lighting. So I'm going to click here, go to dome light. We'll call this one HDR, duplicate it and do background. Now the background, we're going to just pick a, you could do red or something that feels holiday spirit. I'm just going to do a dark blue background, something like that. And what you want to do is we don't want this blue background to reflect into our gumdrops, whatever color you select. So we're going to go to details and just turn all of these to zero to our background. Now our HDR, I'm going to go to the object here and I'm going to load up an HDR. I've got a pack that I'll be selling soon, but you can just use the Cinema 4D HDR pack. I'm going to use a, a studio environment. So go to HDR 11 and there you go. There's a studio. It's just a simple studio and I'm going to set the brightness to two because it is kind of a dark environment and I will double click, call this lighting, drag our background and our HDR in, drag this to the bottom and there's our lighting setup. So let's hit render and see how this is looking. So you can see in my background HDR is showing up. So we're going to turn that off by clicking background here. And there you go. And you can see our lighting is bright enough, but our sugar is not showing up. And that's because the visibility of the null is turned off. And there you go. So here's an issue that you're going to run into is that you have black pixels in the reflections. I'm going to show you how to fix that because that's not very accurate to sugar. So let's first get the randomization of the color. So I'm going to turn this off, double click, and we don't need to see the attributes panel. So I'll turn that off. So what we need to do to randomize the colors, we're going to double click. We're going to use the jitter, relatively new node, and we want a jitter. And if I just bring this into color, I'm going to turn off the scatter here, this guy. And you can see we're getting randomization of red. This is not what we want. So what's happening is you need to select a color and then you can do hue saturation shifts and value shifts. That's not what we want. We want to do our own color palette. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to need a ramp. And this is going to be our color palette. So we'll take both of these and set these to step. So white's going to be our first color. We're going to do red for our first color, orange for our next color, yellow for my next color, and then purple. I think that's all the colors. So we have red, orange, yellow, purple, and white. And we're forgetting one more color. We're missing green. So I'll go ahead and add green in here. I knew that was going to happen. Select the last one. Select the first one. Shift. Distribute selected knots. 
and then we can just scale this. And there we go. Now, these colors are not going to be accurate. We're actually going to need to adjust them, and I'll show you the way to do that, but we'll visit that in a second. So we're going to load up. You can use the transmission color, but I like seeing kind of a subsurface light reflection, which is created using the scatter color. So we're going to hold control and click, and it adds it to our list, and we're going to drag this into here. And now, instead of using the color output for the jitter, we want to control it using these colors here. And the way you do it is this is zero and this is one. So what we can do is if we're going from zero to one and we get a value, that's a float value. So 0.5 would be somewhere around here and so on. So what we can do is we can steal the float number and put it into the alt input and that will randomly float jitter this value. You can see our float jitter is set from minimum zero and maximum zero. So we'll set this to one and now it'll randomly do the color. So if you want to, if your clones are not randomized the right way, you can just change the seed value. I'll leave it on one, two, three. Now that we have the jitter float value from zero to one selecting the color here what we next need to do is we need to adjust our transmission so we'll bring it all the way up and we're going to add some roughness to this to help with the effect so i'll set it to 0.3 for now 0.325 and we're going to bring down the reflection so it's not so intense now if you're to render this you won't see the effect because we need to apply the depth and the way you can kind of roughen the in the size of the depth of this so if we go here we can click here and we can select our low poly and you can see it's 100 units large by 90 high so what we can do is that's our scale so we can set the depth to something like 25 and we'll see if this is the right level so now we'll go to our view here render in the viewport and you can see we can see through it but something's not right so we can bring down the blurriness here our shine could be just a teeny bit brighter reflection can be just a little bit blurrier and if we reduce the depth you'll see it gets darker and you can't see through it as much so let's do 35 and that makes it too bright so i think 25 is good somewhere around there but we're still not getting our randomization so let's figure out why and there we go now you can see we're getting a bunch of green ones which is not good so let's go ahead and increase the cloner count and there you go so if you run into an issue where the randomization is not looking the way you like you just go to your node editor select the jitter and i'm going to set this to one make sure you're in the float jitter so i'll set this to one because we're doing this one we can close this here to avoid confusion and you can see we have a bunch of different materials colors and then you can randomize the position of this or whatever but i'll leave it on this just like that so let's get the sugar going so i'm going to zoom into one of them and i'll show you the issue we have okay so you see how the reflection has black in it this doesn't look very sugar like and the fix to that is you might be tempting you could do this you could go to the render settings go to your globals and turn this combined and refraction up so you don't get the black showing up that will work but it'll significantly increase render times so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to bring this down one and i'll show you this is what's happening it's the cutoff so i'm going to leave this on six just keep it default and i'll show you the fix so what we do is we go to our sugar here and we can increase the roughness i'll do 0.35 so it turns it white and then we can bring this down ever so slightly to 0.9 and now it turns it white and you don't need much you can see if i still want that reflectivity to be more transparent i can just bring this down to like 0.125 and there we go so without using the cutoff value increase we can just make them white by 10 percent so there's our sugar crystals now i want to refine my texture here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my node editor go to the gumdrop and i'm going to double click and type in bump drag in our bump map add a noise max on noise bring it in and with this one i'm going to change it to blistered turbulence bring the bump amount to something like 0.25 you don't need big numbers for this and then our input size i'm going to check this i'm going to set it to 25 and just check so i'm going to click solo the noise turn off my scatter so i can verify that looks about the right size for the noise we're going simple with it so let's check now and this is without the sugar and you can see we get might be hard to tell on the render here but there's some slight texture to it i want to bring up the reflection just a little bit so we'll do this to taste somewhere around there let's bring up the reflection just a little bit on the roughness i think 0.22 looks good and we'll do 0.6 for the weight there we go we'll turn on our reflection of our matrix here turn on our matrix and there we go i think i'm going to bring the sugar up just a little bit so i'll click here at the end and just go until i see like one or two black specs and then back it off one set this to point one because i want it to be a little less reflective there we go so now you can see through them a little bit better so it doesn't look like pure white and that is the render trick to getting that sugar to look correct and you can of course make this more photorealistic but i just wanted to cover these little quick topics so now what we can do is we can select our cloner and we can um, add more to this i'm going to turn off my viewport render you don't usually want that running when you're making changes like this i'll set these kind of close so like 110 because they're 100 and then i can use the random to randomize the position so with this selected first let's name this one sugar because that's our sugar one we'll go to our sugar and drag this in so we don't get confused with the cloner drop selected we'll go here and do random and we'll crank this up so we're looking this way like that something like that and we'll do rotation 360 tab 360 tab 360 there we go i can change the number if i want random different randoms i like this one and we want to avoid intersections like this so what we can do is with this let's type in pos for position the cloner selected i'm going to go ahead and use the push apart put it below and then this is set to 10 which is our default and we don't have to have this so high we can set it to one and there you go so now they're not 
intersecting. So our objects are 100 units. So you can see we set it to 100. So some of them might get close, but they're not touching. Now, if we want to take this one step further and have them twisting and spinning, plane effector, the field will set to time. And instead of moving position, we'll do rotation. 360, 360, 360. Then we'll go to the field here, set our time to the length of our duration, which is 90 frames. Let's set it to 120. Set our timeline to 120. Hit play. And now they're moving and they'll make a perfect loop. And there you go. Now I can render and there's our scene. So I want to tidy this up, keep it clean. So I'll call this gumdrops, add our cloner in here, all the elements and add our sugar in as well. And there you go. There is your happy gumdrops. That's it. I hope you found this video useful and happy holidays. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support. Gumdrops falling like the snow. Colors bright, a festive glow. In the air, sweet laughter rings. Candy dreams on Christmas wings. Gumdrops, they light up the night. Candy canes and stars so bright. Christmas brings a world so sweet. Gumdrops dance beneath our feet.